The transfer case is a drivetrain component responsible for distributing power to multiple wheels. Most 4x4 vehicles have one, if so, it's located at the back of the transmission with two drive shafts coming out of it. The Cherokee XJ was offered with four transfer cases through its run, but generally you'll see one of two. In this video, I'll be covering the transfer case in an introductory sense, assuming you've just bought an XJ and are just getting into things. Later in the video, I'll explain some more complex areas like spline count compatibility and fancy statistic numbers. There are chapters available in the description. To begin, the XJ was offered in three drive types. They all came standard with four-wheel drive, but starting in 1985, it could be optioned out for a base two-wheel drive system. Two-wheel drive XJs do not have a transfer case, and the engine only powers the rear wheels. The base four-wheel drive system is called Command Track and is part-time only. I'll explain what that means in a little bit. The other 4x4 system is called Select Track and is usually only seen on the higher trim levels. Select Track offers full-time mode, which is just all-wheel drive like Subarus. From 1984 to early 87, the XJ had either the NP207 for Command Track models or the NP228 for Select Track models. In 1987, both of these would be replaced for the much more commonplace and otherwise upgraded NP231 and NP242, respectively. You can tell which transfer case you have by looking at the circular metal tag on the back of it. The three numbers in the top section will be one of the four options on screen, with the overwhelming majority being the NP231. An easier way to tell is to just look at the shift lever. If the shift pattern looks like this, you have command track. I'm going to estimate approximately 80% of all four-wheel drive XJs have the NP231, which is a good thing because it's widely considered to be the best transfer case ever put in a Jeep. So how does it work? At its very basic principle, power enters the transfer case from the output of the transmission. In two-wheel drive, it travels straight through to the rear wheels via direct connection. Engaging four-wheel drive sends power also to the front wheels by driving a chain attached to the main shaft. We can see on this diagram that in two high, only the rear wheels are being powered at a one-to-one -one gear ratio. This means you can drive on any surface at any speed and is what you should be using most of the time because you do get better gas mileage in two-wheel drive. Four high, or more accurately, four-wheel drive high range part-time it's the same as two-wheel drive, other than that it also powers the front wheels. 4-high still uses a 1-to-1 -one gear ratio, so you can theoretically go any speed in 4-high, but realistically speaking, if you need four-wheel drive at anything over 50 miles an hour, you should probably just slow down. 4-high <laughs> is also a part-time only mode, which means the front and rear wheels are physically locked together. If the rear wheels are spinning at 5 miles an hour, the front wheels will also spin at 5 miles an hour as they are directly connected together through the transfer case. The wheels being directly connected is good for off-road, which is what Jeeps are designed to do. So if your front wheels lose traction and can't carry the vehicle forward, well the back wheels are forced to spin as well, so generally with the two working together it'll get you over some pretty impressive obstacles. The problem with part-time is that it can't be used on high traction surfaces like dry pavement. When a vehicle turns, all four of the wheels need to spin at different speeds because they all travel different distances. And if the wheels are locked together by a part-time four-wheel drive system, one of two things will happen. Either your wheels will skip on the pavement or your drivetrain will bind up and something might break, usually a U-joint. Because you can't use part-time on dry pavement, its light on the dash is displayed in yellow, signifying it should only be used in certain situations, like sand, mud, or deep snow. 4-high can be engaged and disengaged at any speed, as it's a shift-on-the-fly system built for the convenience of not having to get out of the vehicle and lock the front wheel hubs. Generally speaking, it's good habit to let off the gas before shifting into or out of 4-high, or press in the clutch with a manual. When you do shift, 
Give the lever a good firm yank like you're in an action movie. This will ensure it fully engages, which you should be able to feel and hear with a firm click. When shifting back into two-wheel drive, note the transfer case may not immediately disengage part-time. It will sometimes get stuck in four-wheel drive, and generally all you need to do is tap the gas and it should slide out. Getting stuck in part-time doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong with your transfer case, as it is a relatively primitive system compared to modern cars. It's just a minor flaw present in a lot of older transfer cases, so don't sweat it. If it gets stuck in 4 high for a long while, there's probably something wrong with the shift linkage, which is way over-engineered for what it does and usually gets misaligned. You can fix the linkage by cutting it out with a hacksaw and installing an ASI linkage, which is one of the single best upgrades you can do on your Jeep. Highly recommended, linked in the description. Moving on to our next position, neutral marked with the letter N. Neutral in the transfer case disconnects the drive shafts from the transmission, allowing the vehicle to free roll. The procedure for shifting into neutral starts by putting the transmission in neutral, and then the transfer case, and then the transmission goes into park or in gear. Neutral is used for flat towing the Jeep. You can equip a tow bar and attach the vehicle to the back of an RV, and neutral allows it to free roll in such a case. That's honestly really the only purpose for it beyond maybe getting winched out of a canyon. Be careful when in neutral, as the only way to stop the Jeep is with the brakes or parking brake, as park doesn't actually stop the wheels anymore. Four low, or four wheel drive low range part time, puts us back in four wheel drive just as before, but this time, power from the engine goes through a 2.72 to 1 gear reduction, which multiplies torque output by that much. In amplifying torque, it reduces top speed, with your maximum being only about 20 to 25 miles an hour. A realistically 4 low is only very effective in first gear, so crawling speeds at best. 4 low is for serious hardcore off-roading, for when you need to drive up a vertical wall or tow something really heavy a short distance, like another vehicle out of a ditch. It is mind-bogglingly powerful with a manual transmission, with certain XJs being capable of a 34 to 1 gear reduction in stock form meaning, theoretically, one might be able to actually move my ex's conceited attitude. The procedure for shifting into 4 low assumes we start in 4 high with the vehicle at a stop. Put the transmission in neutral, and in one continuous motion, move the four-wheel drive lever all the way back. It may be difficult to get it into 4 low, so if it doesn't work, try engaging it with the Jeep rolling at maybe 3 or less miles an hour. With 4 low firmly selected, put the transmission back into drive and behold the true capability of the inline 6. You can of course go in reverse in 4 low, just remember it is a part time system, but I don't imagine you'll ever need to use it on the road. 4 low works best for crawling over rocks or driving up very steep hills, but it doesn't help to amplify torque in wet or snowy conditions. So that's all the basic functions of the Command Track NP231 transfer case. To summarize real quick, two-wheel drive is your everyday average driving mode, four high is for light trails and things like sand, dirt, and ice, neutral is for being towed, and four low is for towing someone else. If you happen to have the select track package with the NP242 transfer case, you'll have an additional four-wheel drive high range full-time mode. Full-time works exactly like all-wheel drive, with a center differential in the transfer case allowing each wheel to spin individually. Full-time is useful mostly for snow, as often driving on slick road surfaces alternates quite randomly between no traction and yes traction, meaning using a part-time involves shifting the selector back and forth as road conditions change. Full-time mode is a set-it-and-forget-it four-wheel drive, allowing you to drive on any road surface at any speed. Just like four-wheel drive part-time, you can toggle this mode either while moving or at a stop. Now, I will say that without ABS or traction control, full-time four-wheel drive doesn't really work all that great in the XJs. Because each wheel is powered individually, if one loses traction, the engine will only spin that wheel, as it's the easiest to turn and isn't locked with anything. Modern cars with all-wheel drive make use of anti-lock brakes and traction control systems to help the wheels regain traction, but most XJs don't have ABS and none ever had TCS, so I've found after a winter of experimenting that the full-time four-wheel drive is a bit unpredictable. 
I honestly think part-time performs better in snow. The thing you just have to be mindful of is what exactly you're driving on and be careful not to bind the wheels in the dry areas. I can't think of any reasonable justification for having it in the south where it doesn't snow, but having full-time does open a bit more versatility with the XJ if you live somewhere miserable like Wisconsin. I do want to note real quick that the NP242 gets a lot of unwarranted hate. It's not a bad transfer case at all, and in fact, the US military actually uses a variant of this exact case in their Humvees, and a lot of people falsely assume that the full-time mode replaces part-time. It doesn't. You still have all the same options as the 231. It just adds another one. Let's put them against each other then. As you can see on this table, the 231 is trivially stronger, but considering the 4.0 only outputs a mere fraction of that torque, I don't think the strength really makes any meaningful difference. The 231 is of course a part-time only transfer case, but that comes at the benefit of not only being smaller, but lighter and less complex. It's because of the internal simplicity that the 231 is better for anything you take off-road, and the 242 reserves itself for a more casual winter use. The transfer cases did change a little bit through the Cherokee's run. The NP231's earliest models during the Renix era saw a 21 spline input shaft with a vacuum switch integrated to control the front axle vacuum disconnect. Although unconfirmed exactly when, around 1989 the 231 got a slightly stronger 23 spline input shaft and in mid-1991 ditched the vacuum switch as the Dana 30 from this point on would not feature the CAD system. Prior to this, the 231 used a cable-driven speedometer, and in 1991, it was switched to an electric speedometer. In 1996, the transfer cases would switch from an internal slip yoke to an external one, meaning a different driveshaft pinion is used. From 1996 onwards, they remained otherwise unchanged. One final difference in regards to interchangeability is the input shaft length. The input shaft length is determined by the transmission the transfer case is attached to. The Peugeot BA105, AX15, and the 97 Plus AX5 cases use a short input shaft. The AX4, pre-97 AX5, and all years of the AW4 use a medium length shaft, and the NV3550 cases use a long input shaft. I wasn't able to find anything about the A904 transmissions, but I don't think anyone actually has a four-cylinder automatic four-wheel drive Cherokee. Uh, if so, I would love to see it because I don't think they exist. The input shaft differences are usually negligible enough to be swapped, for example, by putting a previously AW4 mounted transfer case on an AX15. You're actually gaining spline contact, which technically makes that connection stronger, but you can't take an AX15 transfer case and put it on an NV3550 as the difference in length results in the shafts not even connecting. Luckily, the input shafts can be swapped pretty easily if that needs to be done. The last thing is fluid type. Luckily, all the transfer cases request Dexron 2 from the factory, which is the same as the automatic transmission fluid. Unfortunately, Dexron 2 isn't made anymore, so its backwards compatible replacement, Dexron 3, should be used instead. So, that should be everything you need to know about the transfer case. If you're interested in how they actually work, there's a video in the description that covers the internal mechanisms in much more depth. If you have any questions about modding or rebuilding them, I can't help you at all because I've never torn one apart before. <laughs>